Hello, Messi here. My name is Christian and I just woke up. It is around 4 p.m. and I am a night shift nurse. So I start work around 7 p.m. and end 7.30 a.m. the next morning. I live around an hour away from the hospital by taking the subway, but I tend to leave the house around 5 p.m. I know, which is two hours away from the meeting time, but I am the type of person who needs to be at a certain place 30 minutes to an hour before I need to be there just to avoid any anxieties of missing the train or just being late in general or avoiding any arising circumstances or emergencies. So I will show you how I go through my day for the rest of my day and how my night shifts usually goes. So now I'm gonna take a shower, which I won't take you into. <laughs> and then I'll brush my teeth, brush my face, skincare, and get ready for work and leave. at this moment that he knew he <laughs> f***ed up. <laughs> Hi guys, hello from me and my messy hair and my pimple over there. It's actually a mark of a pimple that I scratched last night. Haha, <laughs> some things just never change, do they? <laughs> Anyways, it is April 21st here in New York City. It has been two months since the first half of the video that you watched. In the span of two months, so many things have changed all across the world, especially in the healthcare system. What a time to be a new nurse. Anyways, if it's your first time here, my name is Christian. I am a new graduate registered nurse here in New York City. I began my professional nursing career in the hospital around November of 2019 in a cardiac surgery step down floor and that was the point of the video the initial point actually was to take you day by day hour by hour on how it is to be a cardiac nurse here in new york city specifically in the floor that i am in i was going to take you through what i usually do on an ideal night or even the non-ideal nights during emergent situations <laughs> And so I was gonna take you hour by hour, of course, off-duty, generally taking you a day in a life, or more so a night in a life, given that I'm a night shift nurse. But given what has happened and has been happening in the world, we will have to scratch that because one, our cardiac unit is no longer a cardiac unit for the time being, and you probably know why. But if you have been living under a rock, <laughs> the past month or so, which honestly is not a bad place to be in right now, we are in the middle of a pandemic or a global spread of an infectious disease. And I am referring to COVID-19, which stands for Coronavirus Disease 2019, given that it stemmed from a pneumonia of unknown cause reported by the World Health Organization or WHO from Wuhan, China on December 31st of 2019. So coronavirus is a group of viruses that's already been pre-existing and has been routinely seen in humans in the past. But this COVID-19 is a novel coronavirus. It is a coronavirus infection that has not been previously identified and reported in human beings. And it has taken the world by a storm. When I shot the first part of this video on February 20th, which is two months ago, there have been reports worldwide of the coronavirus and how it was plaguing parts of China, Italy, Japan, and other countries around the world. But it didn't really reach America, especially New York City, around the beginning of March. And as much as I was trying to finish 
our cardiac video, things just swept up so quickly that I no longer had time and focus on that initial topic. In a span of weeks, our cardiac unit was converted into a COVID ICU and telemetry floor. All elective surgeries like open heart surgeries that were not deemed emergent were canceled. And for the past month, we only house patients in our unit who are positive for COVID. Our unit and many units across the hospital system and almost all the hospitals in New York City actually are housing COVID positive patients. So COVID-19 is deemed by the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention or the CDC as a respiratory infection. Hence why the first incident in Wuhan, China was classified as a pneumonia of unknown cause because we really did not know much about it. So respiratory infections like COVID-19 can be spread and transmitted through droplets of fluid. These droplet particles are classified and divided into two types. If they are greater than 5 to 10 micrometers in diameter size, they are considered respiratory droplets and if they are less than 5 micrometers in diameter size, they are called droplet nuclei, which warrant an airborne transmission precaution. Airborne transmissions like tuberculosis call for stricter precautions. Droplet nuclei are smaller in size, meaning they can be transmitted and enter another person's respiratory tract quicker, bigger size particles would be, and can also hang and stay in the air much longer than respiratory droplets given their lighter size, which also means that they can spread and be spread at farther distances greater than one meter. Therefore, airborne precautions call for stricter and a more complete protective personal equipment donning. For example, N95 masks that it's so tightly close on a person's skin that the hope is to prevent these smaller size droplet nuclei to hopefully be blocked at a greater rate than a regular surgical mask would. The rooms in airborne precautions also require negative pressure rooms so that the infectious nuclei remain in that room solely and hopefully not outside the doors into the hallways of the hospital. So COVID-19 is deemed to be only a droplet precaution and not even airborne transmission, but still we converted our whole cardiac unit now housing COVID patients in a full airborne mode given that we have vacuums in every room and the whole unit is vacuumed into a negative pressure room and we wear N95 masks. Given that COVID-19 is a respiratory infection that can be spread through respiratory droplets, it is so important to wear your mask when going outside to prevent from contracting the virus and even spreading it if you do have it, even without symptoms. Initially, the CDC discouraged the general public from wearing masks in public places if they are asymptomatic or not having symptoms of COVID, which is usually a fever greater than 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or higher, non-productive cough, or shortness of breath. But as time went by, virologists and epidemiologists talked about pre-symptomatic transmission of the disease, meaning even those who did not have the symptoms yet can transmit the disease to others. So now the CDC is telling everyone to wear masks wherever they go just to lessen the vulnerability of everyone from contracting the virus, especially in public places where they shouldn't be in the first place. Unless you're an essential worker, please stay home. And so COVID-19 really does present itself with respiratory complications given that it is a respiratory infection. The patients who present to the ED usually complain with shortness of breath, non-productive cough, fever, even feelings of weakness, and a new symptom that was reported a few weeks ago of loss of taste and smell. So when I say that our COVID patients deteriorate and they compensate respiratory-wise so quickly, I am not exaggerating. These patients have their oxygen saturation probes on 24-7 so that we could monitor their oxygen saturation rate, which is the percentage of oxygen in the person's blood. And it tells us how well these patients are perfusing oxygen to the rest of their body. For these COVID patients, we usually want to maintain their oxygen saturation rate 92% or higher, but we see patients who are in their 80s and without oxygen devices, they go down to their 70s and 60s, which warrants a rapid response call. Many times patients are on basic nasal cannula oxygen. It comes to a point that even the oxygen delivered by nasal cannula does not suffice the person's respiratory system for perfusion anymore and they have to be placed on oxygen devices that deliver higher percentages of oxygen like non-rebreather masks or venturi masks, high flow nasal cannulas and even BiPAP machines. It has been a rough few weeks in the hospital because of this COVID situation and 
it has even been harder, given that I am a new nurse in the hospital, came fresh out of school, fresh out of being licensed, and to be placed in a warfare in the healthcare world as this. It is literally a warfare against an invisible enemy. It is true when headlines say that we are in trenches. It has not been fun or enjoyable so far. Instead, it has been scary. Aside from the fact that it is true that PPE has been scarce and you need it along with the fear at the back of your mind of contracting the virus and spreading it back home to your loved ones. Just the mental and the emotional aspects of having worked with COVID patients the past weeks have just been tormenting and has been not easy. Crazy is an understatement and I tell that to all my friends, crazy is an understatement to explain what we have been going through so far. And imagine being a new nurse trying to learn things along the way and being in the front lines to handle situations that are not ideal and are not normal like this. Um, it has been hard. It has been emotionally telling and physically telling as well. But I did make an oath to care for others. And it has been tested and has been tried. And I am still learning along the way how to handle stuff and how to manage stuff. And as hard as it has been, it has truly been a learning experience. A scary learning experience. The amount of deaths I have witnessed the past weeks, every night during shift, has been crazy. We have around three to four deaths every day. And you know, as nurses, you're not just there to give medications to these patients, clean them when they need to be cleaned, but you are there to care for them and to form a relationship with them, a connection, so that they build trust with your care and that you are also reminded of why you do what you do. And it has been hard. <laughs> It has been really hard um, the past weeks. I have seen my co-nurses and co-workers cry, either because the patient that they have been caring for for a while passed, or news of loved ones passed. We have a couple of nurses out sick because they are positive with the virus itself. And we also have incidents of nurses in other floors and other hospitals and doctors and other staffs as well, even radiology technicians who have passed away from the virus. We are the most saturated population right now with the virus caring for these patients, especially us nurses who are in the bedside for the whole 12 hours of the shift or even more if emergencies arise. The hardest part really with COVID patients is their stability, not just respiratory wise, but even mentally wise. When the body is deprived of oxygen, the brain is deprived of oxygen. And the first sign of poor oxygenation is an altered mentation. And so we see patients who are confused, pulling their lines, pulling their oxygen devices, which then leads to a deterioration in their oxygen saturation rate, which requires you to run to the room to place back their oxygen. Or even if they didn't take out their oxygen device, that specific device they are currently on are just not working for them anymore. And you have to spend time, of course, protecting yourself first, donning your PPE before you run to the room, which takes time and which leads more time for the patient to be even more deoxygenated and just the amount of fear and stress you go to of wanting to save the patient in a timely manner. And I think that's a very big toll on me emotionally wise is thinking you can save everyone. And it comes to a point where you just have to accept that you can't and that you just have to do your best, especially with patients that we have with COVID. We cannot save everybody and we surely haven't been able to. And I think that's one of the hard parts is trying to learn of when to step back and when to not forget your 
own self and your own help and your own care while caring for these patients. My mom always told me that you are your own person first before you are a nurse. If I don't have help for myself and the safety for myself, how can I secure my patient's health as well? It has been hard, <laughs> like I said, I cannot stress it enough. But I think one of the good things that came out of this whole crisis is the teamwork that has been made between the staff, between the doctors, the nurses, the techs, and even the environmental staff, the transport team, especially the respiratory therapists, every frontliner that walks the hospital with the goal to care and save these patients' lives. It's just hard to see patients deteriorate. You know, I've seen patients die in code prior to COVID, given that our patients in our cardiac unit were acute themselves. But this is a different type of acute. This... I just can't really put it into a single word or a single phrase. I had one patient the other night who you can tell is really short of breath despite being on two oxygen devices and still satting in the low 80%. She reached out for my hand and she held my hand and I said, are you sleepy? And she shook her head and I said, are you short of breath? And she shook her head. And I asked, are you tired? And she nodded and tears fell out of her eyes. And it's just hard. <laughs> it's just hard, especially when you're on a call with family members five minutes ago because we can't have visitors, of course. And after five minutes, the patients pass without them knowing. And we just tell them after a code happens or if their DNR, DNI, that was just it. And we have instances of patients pass in front of their family members through FaceTime or Zoom. And you hear family members crying sorry that they couldn't be there for their um, family on the bed. And it has just been really, really, really hard. But I know that one day, hopefully one day, this all ends, not anytime soon, especially not when people are still crowding outside for no reason, and treating this like it's still a hoax, and that it's not a crisis, protesting of wanting to go out and have their haircuts, as if it's worth much more than the lives of people suffering. It's because they do not see, they do not know what's going on inside the hospital walls. They do not see what we have been seeing and witnessing and experiencing. There have been times when I wanted to cry and run myself to the med room or to the supply room because I cannot believe of what just, of what I've been experiencing. But I am so grateful for my team who have been there to support me and each other and to remind each other that we are in this together. And also for my mom as well, who is also in the front lines, or also is also in the COVID floor. This is the new normal. This is how it will be for a while. And we just have to, I guess, learn and sad to say used to it for a while. So I'm guessing this video is being too long. So I want to close that. I just hope everyone stays safe, not just for themselves, but also for the people around them. Wash your hands frequently with water and soap for at least 20 seconds. Wear a mask if you need to be outside. If you need to be outside, if not, please stay home as much as possible. We are doing our best in the healthcare facilities to do our job, to care for everyone, and to minimize spread as much as possible. We hope that you do your job as well of protecting yourself and your loved ones by staying at home. I think the greatest takeaway so far from what we've been experiencing with the virus is, wow, to live life. <laughs> I know it's hard with the quarantine, but to live life each day with no regrets and to tell the people that you love that you love them and that you care for them it's so hurtful to see family members say their goodbyes and their i love yous and i'm sorry through the phone how much harder it is for those who are not able to say so because because their family because their loved ones died 
so suddenly. Life is short, that statement never really got to me until I've seen how short it really is. And uh, pursue the things you want to pursue, engage in the things that find you meaning and purpose in life and joy, and uh, spend as much time as you can with your loved ones and to let them know how much you care and love them. It has been a heavy, heavy time and it's so much heavier when you have not and cannot say or do the things that you wish that you could. This is Christian and stay safe. Thank you everyone.